down there with Jack in the Bot. Kevin, howdy. How's the weather down there? Hi, we're down here on the field with Jack in the Bot 2910 and Darlene. All right. Uh, congratulations. You guys have won uh, three events so far this year, and you're looking pretty good. How, do, how are you feeling about your prospects? I'm feeling really good. We have a really great alliance, and I'm super excited to play with them. And uh, strategy-wise, well, of course, you guys have only lost once today. Uh, um, any big strategy the ideas that you've got going? Just making sure that people don't overlap with each other, making sure that things go smoothly, make, uh, having people go over certain places, and then also having a plan for substation, end game, just making sure everything is super laid out and that our alliance partners know exactly what they're doing. It makes everything sm go really smoothly during the match. Well, it sounds like a really professional plan. You guys are definitely being watched worldwide. We're really proud of you. Good luck. Back to, uh, back to the Josh. <laughs> the Josh thanks you, Kevin. All right. All right. Thank you all. I think, uh, actually, I'm not going to be the one doing the talking here for a minute. Brett has some words now after all of everything that just went down. Yeah, we do have a little bit of bookkeeping Sweet. to take care of before we move on into our playoff bracket. Uh, two backups have been called in to our competition at this point. First one is the number one alliance has called in a backup. They are replacing Team 948 with Team 1983. That will happen in the next match for Alliance number one. I've also just been informed, this is not even on the graphic yet, Alliance number three, who will be appearing in this next match, has also called in a backup. They will be replacing Team 5920 with Team 1899. So Alliance number three bringing a backup robot in as well. And just a reminder for you and everybody out there, Josh, Backups that, that need exactly to appear in the first match after they are called in, but from that point on, it is a four-team alliance, and any three of the four teams can appear in any match. So it's very possible we'll see either 948 or 5920 back on the field before all is said and done. And there's some really interesting implications for how that shakes out in terms of overall progression opportunities. Our winning alliance, wholesale, even if it's four teams, will be all going invited to the Houston Championship. So even if one of our now four-team alliances is the one that wins the event, all four of them claim an advancement spot to Houston. The more interesting way this goes is if that's not one of the winning alliances, you get district points this year based on how many matches you play proportionally in these playoff rounds, presuming you make it to round, I think it's four, where we start dishing out points, and you get them proportional to how many matches you played. So, with district points tripled this week, it could be really interesting for some of these teams who play, you know, are the Alliance is going to start playing 50-50 to try and get the best chance of moving them up the district leaderboard for a points-based advancement? Is maybe one of these cases just a broken robot and we don't know? It'll be really interesting to see that shake out. Yeah, it's a little too early to probably start speculating on how district points will work out, but definitely worth keeping in mind that this could have positive or negative effects for some of the teams on these 14 alliances in terms of their advancement to the World Championships. Looks like we're going to be ready for our next match soon, so we'll take a quick break before we send it to the field. 